So Colin, yeah, we got this uh, little water bottle from SEM during the recent SEM conference. Mm, very nice. And uh, we've decided we're going to bond a gauge to this, and we're going to put it in the hoop direction, and we'll probably end up pressurizing this and looking at it as a thin wall pressure vessel. Mm. And we're going to be using the C4A series of strain cages. In fact, this particular one is the 125 SL, and bonding that in place, it's got three lead wire connection connected to it. It's uh, nine feet long. Um, it's very, very similar to our CEA series of strain gauges, but now the C4A construction is the advanced sensor construction. And going forward, this is gonna be one of our premier leaded gauges. So, start off with standard surface preparation. What's well, the first thing we gotta do? Let's degrease this puppy. So let's take some of the CSM3. Did you want to do this? You want me to? You can do it. That's fine. All right. Okay. I get to participate this time. <laughs> Saturate the CSM3, the gauze sponge with a CSM3, and I'm just degreasing it. Now, one thing of note, this pretty blue anodization on here can't be because anodization does not transmit strain as well as uh, the aluminum that would be underneath it. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're going to start off with a dry abrade. <clears throat> and since it's a, uh, a fairly smooth finish, we're gonna go ahead and start with the 400 grit. And hopefully that'll cut through the paint, and I mean, the excuse me, the anodization better. So the first thing I've, after degreasing it, I'm going to dry abrade. And I can tell you right up front, maybe this is not gonna, oh, we'll get it with there a wet abrade. Okay. Dry abrade just to get most of the difficult stuff off. And then I'm going to wet a braid with the conditioner A, the mild phosphoric acid solution, the red tip bottle. Take off a brand new piece of the silicon carbide paper, the SCP-3. And now I'm going to flood it. And since this is kind of a curved surface, I kind of got to be careful about it not running off. And then I'm going to wet a braid. And now I'm trying to make a nice little footprint here without paint and also with a coarse enough surface to properly bond the strain gauge. I take a dry gauze sponge, fold it into quarters, and with a single wiping motion I'm going to absorb the excess material, the conditioner A. And then I'm going to take a cotton tip applicator and the conditioner A, and I'm going to flood the surface again. And now I'm going to scrub with the conditioner A. And you'll notice it comes up with a little bit of gray here. It will always come up a little gray because it's etching the aluminum and therefore going to continue to have a little bit of a gray color. Take a clean dry gauze sponge, fold it into quarters and with a single wiping motion, absorb off the excess conditioner A. And since we're gonna be using the Ambon 200 and almost all adhesive systems are pH sensitive, we're gonna now use the Neutralizer 5A, the blue tip bottle, and we're going to scrub with the Neutralizer 5A. This is going to bring the pH back to a nominal neutral or slightly basic. And it also has a little detergent in it so it can uh, do a little cleaning. Note the, gauze, the cotton tip applicator comes up almost perfectly clean. We're no longer etching. And final step of surface preparation will be a dry gauze sponge folded into quarters in a single wiping motion. You don't want to wipe back and forth or you'll redeposit contamination. Now, having finished our surface preparation, we're just going to go ahead and set this somewhere out of harm's way. And we'll pick up our glass plate where we're gonna lay out our strain gauge. And before we put anything on the, the glass plate, we need to make sure it's chemically clean. So we'll take two or three drops of Neutralizer 5A. It's not a critical amount. A clean dry gauze sponge and scrub that surface. Note I'm pushing pretty hard. It's making a squeaking noise. Now that I've got a chemically clean surface, I'm going to take the pre-leaded gauge, and Colin, I might need a little bit of your help here, mm -hmm. holding things steady while I apply the tape. 
if you'll just take this into the lead wire and kind of hold it out flat for me. Now because we're going to go in the hoop direction, I'm going to go along the long axis of the gauge. I'm going to take the PCT 3M tape. I'm folding the ends over just briefly. Give me a little handle to work with. And with the gauge laid out perfectly on, no, I want to do it this direction because we're going to do hoop oh, direction. Right. We're okay. putting the gauge in the hoop direction. And I'm just going to tack it onto the backing of the gauge. Lifting at a shallow angle. I'm now going to transfer it over to my pressure vessel. Okay. I'm going to take this and lay it out in the hoop direction. I'm paying attention here to, to tack this down really well so that it doesn't have a problem. And we need to locate our M-Bond 200. Oh, wait a minute, M-Bond 200 is in my pocket. I took it out of the refrigerator and I need to keep it uh, warm. And there also should be some catalyst C. So now we've positioned our strain gauge. We need to expose the bonding surface of the gauge so that we can apply the catalyst C. And I'm gonna lift at a shallow angle until I'm beyond the gauge. And I'm gonna push it back on itself. Take the catalyst C and on the inside of the neck of the bottle, I'm gonna hit it eight to 10 times. Then with a single brush action, I'm going to wet the backing of the gauge with the Catalyst C. And we're going to wait one full minute of air dry time. Okay, we've had my, our full one minute of air dry time for the Catalyst C, and that allows the alcohol to evaporate, allowing it not to be a contaminant during their install process. I'm now going to get my gauge appropriately positioned in my left hand. Using my right hand to dispense the adhesive, I'm going to put a single drop right at the cusp of the tape and the, uh, the pressure vessel. I'm going to squeegee it into place and then follow with my thumb. And if you're looking for a calibrated number, third of a white thumbnail. And I'm going to hold this for 60 long seconds. Don't trust your brain, it's in a hurry. Trust your watch. Colin, tell me when my six, 60 seconds are up. Mm -hmm. All right, I've finished my one minute of thumb pressure and I know something that, I'm, that you might not be aware of, I'm stuck to the can, okay? Mm -hmm. Rather than pull straight up, rotate, and there, your oils of your skin act as a natural release agent. And now it's gonna stay under the tape for another two minutes. Okay, we've finished our two minutes under the tape after one minute of thumb pressure. And before we lifted the tape at a shallow angle to keep from damaging the gauge during that process, now we're gonna pull it 180 degrees back on itself, putting the adhesive layer into shear, which it's very good at, and not peel, which it is not terribly good at. Now we'll do a quick visual inspection. It looks like it's got a pretty nice uniform color underneath it. Uh, everything appears to be okay. So we need now to add a strain relief loop. Take your pointed tweezers, set them about oh three eighths of an inch to half an inch away from the gauge, and then rocking away from the gauge, make this inchworm shape. Okay. And then just behind the inchworm, we're gonna take the paper drafting tape the PDT-3, a single piece, inch and a half, two inches long, it's not critical. And I'll place that just behind that strain relief loop. This allows every time you flex it, it's not gonna tug on those soft solder junctions. Finally, if we chose to, we'll put down an environmental protection and what you could do here is, is put a little window 
of paper drafting tape to make it look pretty. So in this case, we're going to use the M-Coat C. You'll notice I've masked off the area to limit the flow out of the, the environmental protection, making it look a little prettier. And then I'm basically going to mop on the M-Coat C in and around the lead wire junction and the uh, solder junctions, and then down in and around the gauge. Note I'm trying to make it fairly thick because as an environmental protection, you want it to protect the strain gauge. It's not like we're making a show car finish here. And once I've completed the installation of the M-Coat C, it requires a 24-hour cure for every 15 mil or 20 mils of thickness. So tomorrow afternoon, we could probably test this. Okay, now that we've finished our environmental protection and we've let it cure overnight, we can now check for the performance of the strain gauge. I've got it balanced out now, and we got about a one micro strain offset, which is uh, one inch in 15.8 miles, so we're not gonna worry about that. And when I load it, I'm just gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna load it and unload it. Load it and unload it. I'm getting decent zero return and repeatable inputs. So it looks like I got a pretty good installation here. Because this is an aluminum specimen, every time I touch it, it tends to change its temperature. And for these demonstration purposes, we used an 06 STC gauge, so that might account for a slight thermal output here. But it responds as it should. It's pre-wired. It's 350 ohms. You should love it.